Today, we're going to take a step back from the colonial dooryard garden, but continue on the topic of the herbal medicines that would have been grown in such a garden. In the 1840s, styles of gardening began to change, and so people started to seek out their herbal remedies through things like patent medicines. Patent medicines early on didn't have any sorts of ingredients printed on them, and they were usually marketed based on a certain person. So a healer of some kind, a pharmacist, a doctor. Um, and I have a couple that I'm going to show you today that came up in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Uh, the first one that I'm gonna show you is Lydia Pinkham's vegetable compound. This was uh, marketed as a solution for women's troubles. Uh, Lydia Pinkham lived in Lynn, Massachusetts. She began cooking this on her stove in 1875, and it contained unicorn root, life root, black cohosh, pleurisy root, and fenugreek seed. This was preserved in 19% alcohol at first, and then gradually the amount of alcohol was decreased. The bottle that I'm holding actually has 13.5% alcohol. So this is a place where you can see the beginnings of concern about alcoholic content that ultimately led to the temperance movement and the prohibition of alcohol um, coming into play. So this was gradually pressured to be a lower percentage of alcohol. With Payne's celery compound, this was also, um, this was 21% alcohol, um, and it actually came with testimonials from clergy members, which was a common advertising technique for these patent medicines, that said that it was actually a very small percentage of alcohol. Um, this contained celery seed, red chinchona, orange peel, coriander seed, lemon peel, hydrochloric acid, glycerin, simple syrup, water, and alcohol. And this actually still has directions online on how to make at home. Um, it is still being promoted by some folks online. The Lydia Pinkhams you can still buy commercially. Um, and you can also buy this last one commercially. This is Sloan's Liniment. And this is a later one, which I know because it actually lists its active ingredients. Um, so the early forerunners to the Canadian and United States FDA started requiring that they print ingredients. Um, and this one's active ingredient is extract of capsaicum, which is cayenne pepper. And when you rubbed this on your skin, it had a warming effect. So this was prescribed for things like muscle aches, cramps, um, fatigue. So it's sort of like the 1900s version of Icy Hot. But again, you can still buy this today. So you can see, even though folks may have moved away from the idea of the dooryard garden, those herbal remedies continued to be key in medicine even through the early 1900s.